So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get started with a common math problem. So the first number we're going to write down is 2 because we know that in the coagulation cascade there are two major pathways. So because there are two major pathways we start with the number 2. And then we write down the number 5 because we are trying to form clots and clots has five letters. So so far there are two major pathways in the coagulation cascade so we write down the number 2. Above that, we're going to multiply that 2 by 5 because we are trying to form clots and there are 5 letters in the word clots. Now, 2 times 5 equals 10. That's just math. So the common math problem is 2 pathways times 5 clots equals 10, and that's just a math problem. So this is where we are so far. We've gone in order, writing our numbers up. Okay? This is the common math problem. Now we're going to look at those two pathways. We know that the coagulation cascade has two major pathways. The one on the left is going to be the orange pathway, and the one on the right is going to be the blue pathway. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to write down some letters. We're going to count down starting at 12. So we go 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So all I did was count down from 12. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. However, the number 10 was already used because, see, in the common math problem, we said that two pathways times five letters in the word clots equals 10. So because we already used the number 10, counting down from 12, we have to cross out the number 10. This is very simple. All we did was count down from 12, going down to 8, and we crossed out the number 10 because it was already used. Now, what number is left over if we were to continue counting down from 8? Well, 7. The only thing is that we've already reached our arrow, so we have to throw the 7 on the other side, on the blue pathway. So 7. So all I've done so far, I'm just going to review it really quickly so you are you have this in your head, is there were two major pathways, so we wrote down the number 2. We multiplied that by 5 because we're trying to form clots, and there are 5 letters in the word clots, and that equals 10. Then, in the orange pathway, we started counting down from 12 down to 8 where the arrow ended, but we already used 10, so we had to cross out the number 10. So 10 is not a part of that countdown. The next letter, the next number left over was 7. But there wasn't any room left on the orange pathway side because we had already reached the tip of the orange arrow. So then I put the number 7 on the right side on the blue pathway. Now, these are our two pathways. On the left, we have the intrinsic pathway, and on the right, we have the extrinsic pathway. The, the way that you can remember this is based on how many numbers are in each pathway, and that will help you remember the relevant clinical details. So, the intrinsic pathway has more numbers inside of it. Intrinsic, more numbers inside of it. The extrinsic pathway has less extra numbers. Less extra numbers. So we're going to write that in. Now, more numbers inside of it versus less extra numbers will help us remember a few clinical details. First is that when you're testing each of these coagulation pathways, you have to know which test, the PTT or the PT, applies to each pathway. Well, the one with more numbers inside of it is intrinsic, and more is in PTT, whereas less would be PT, because there's less numbers in PT, but more letters in PTT. So more in PTT, less in PT. So that makes sense why PTT tests the pathway with more numbers, because PTT has more letters. PT is in the pathway with less extra numbers, because in PT there are less letters, and in the extrinsic pathway there are less numbers. So this just goes hand in hand. Heparin will affect the intrinsic pathway, and warfarin will affect the extrinsic pathway. There's really no good way to remember this. You kind of just have to memorize it. But once you memorize the mechanism of heparin and warfarin, this becomes very easy. So I would refer you to pharmacology for that. And then the last bit of clinical information, which is actually very high yield, is you have to know that the intrinsic pathway has a, has a longer time to form a clot. Or in other words, it's a slower pathway. Whereas the extrinsic pathway is a faster time to form a clot. It's uh, It's shorter of a pathway. So that makes sense as well because the pathway with more numbers inside of it, which is intrinsic, is going to take longer because there are more clotting factors that have to be generated. Whereas in the pathway with less clotting factors, the extrinsic pathway, less extra numbers, it's going to be a faster pathway or you'll form a clot faster because there are less clotting factors to go through. Now the last detail that I want to point out is that our common math problem 
represents the final common pathway. So if you were to disrupt factor 10, factor 5, or factor 2, both the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways would be affected because both of these pathways come down and lead to the final common pathway. So while in this mnemonic my arrows are actually going up, well, how it works is that if you're doing the intrinsic pathway, 12 is generated, then 11, then 9, then 8, and then 10, 5, and 2. At, whereas in the extrinsic pathway, 7 is generated, and then 10, 5, and 2 is generated. So we're actually moving downward in reality. So what you need to remember is that if you're presented with a question on your USMLE or your Comlex that says that someone has a factor 10 deficiency or a factor 5 deficiency, well, that's going to affect both the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway because this is the final common pathway. And you can remember that in the context of the mnemonic in that it was the common math problem. So once again, I'm just going to summarize everything from top to bottom really quickly just so you have this down because it's a great mnemonic and it's very high yield. We started with the number 2 because there are two pathways. We multiplied that by the number 5 because there are five letters in the word clots. 2 times 5 is 10. This is a common math problem and it represents the final common pathway that affects both the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway if in any way disrupted. We counted down from 12 to 8 with the 8 ending at the arrow tip on the orange side of the intrinsic pathway. But we had to cross out 10 because we already used 10. The intrinsic pathway has more numbers inside of it. Therefore, the PTT would test the intrinsic pathway because PTT has more letters than PT, which would test the extrinsic pathway. The extrinsic pathway was made of only factor 7 because we counted down from 12 to 8 on the left side and then we had no more room for the number 7, which was the next number. So we put that on the right in the extrinsic pathway. All right, guys, this is the coagulation cascade. In summary, it is extremely high yield. You have to know it. They're going to ask you about it on your boards and they're probably going to ask you about heparin and warfarin, bleeding, clotting, all that stuff. So know this and know it well. Good luck.